there are a lot of superpowers out there that I feel don't get the recognition they deserve, and none can be more true than the power we're talking about today, which is shape-shifting. What's up? My name is Lou, and I like to talk about superpowers, explain how they work, who are some of the known users, as well as give you some of my takes on how I feel overall about the power. At the end of the video, you can know who my best user is, who my worst user is, as well as my overall score for the ability. With all that being said, thank you so very much for clicking on this video. Let's just dive right into it, starting with what is shape-shifting? Shape-shifting, long story short, is just the ability to transform into pretty much anything you'd like to. I mean, there are obviously exceptions, but you can change your size, your shape, your texture, your density, uh, to, or your atomic or cellular structure, depending on how like powerful your shape-shifting abilities are. Uh, it can help you mimic qualities, it can allow you to transverse environments, it can allow you to, you know, obviously impersonate other people or things. Shapeshifting is weird because it, it depends on where you get your ability from, if it's supernatural, like, like magic based or something along those lines, then you, you really kind of are able to break the laws of physics where you don't really, you're not really beholden to like certain limitations. Now they do have their own restrictions, but as far as magic goes, your shapeshifting is like unbelievably powerful but we're going to be talking more of like you know more the uh the x-men or dc or you know comic booky route that we go like with you know those superhero or super villain type characters with shape shifting you have a few things that go along with this power like a maybe like sub powers or like you know secondary abilities and i'm gonna go through them real quick just so you get a, a feel for what they really are have things like appearance adaptation I meaning you can change your appearance based on adaptation Camouflage, meaning you can change your colors and you know, mimic or you know, a blend into your environment. You have clothes generation, which I think is a pretty cool like power. Some some characters actually generate clothes out of their like their own body or items out of their own body. You have things like gender transformation, meaning you can transform your gender to I mean that's obvious, but like I feel like I have to state that because there are characters who can't do that. Got a malleable body, meaning you can like actually morph like certain parts of your hands or limbs into like other things. Like for some characters, that's you know bladed weapons. Some do like drills. Some like really powerful characters can do drills. Some can do other people with just their hand. It's the list goes on and on and on. Anyway, the reason why I think it's so over underrated is because I feel like it's really busted. It's like an extremely strong power that I don't feel gets the recognition it deserves. I mean, you got characters like Mystique, obviously, and you got Beast Boy and uh, Martian Manhunter and, you know, characters like that. But I just don't, I don't know, I just feel like they don't use it as well or as much as they should, which is, to me, it's just a crime. I just don't think, I don't think it's really cool that they don't use that power enough. That being said, let's get into some of the known users before we get to the limitations. Some of the known users, like I already mentioned, you got Mystique from the X-Men universe in Marvel. You got Beast Boy from Teen Titans in DC. You got Martian Manhunter from the Justice League comics, DC comics, whatever. You got that's him. You have characters like Alex Mercer from Prototype, El Toguro from Yu Yu Hakusho. Uh, you also have characters like Genie from Aladdin, although his power is a little more advanced. He's still listed as one of the characters. So I'm going to add him just for now, but just so you know, he's... He's kind of out of the running for best character with this ability. We'll, we won't really include him in it. Um, you also have characters like E from Needless. I'm not going to pronounce her last name. It's just too hard. I'll leave it up here somewhere so you can do, do the honors yourself. Characters like the Martian Manhunter and Mystique, they don't have a fixed like size or weight they can go with. For example, Martian Manhunter has the ability, like he can transform as small as a fly or as big as a as a 757 or 747. Mystique, who can also do something similar, she's transforming like, you know, bigger or larger than uh, average characters or, you know, s small animals. But she, like, they, those type of characters don't have a really a fixed limit. And you got characters like Beast Boy, who has a limit to his ability, but basically because he doesn't really do anything but transform into animals, but he can go to like as big as like a Brachiosaurus or as small as a common housefly or a spider. He can do this kind of like something similar because he doesn't really have a big size. I think it just takes a little more effort for him to transform. Everything I'm naming, you gotta admit, they're pretty busted. And then you got characters like Eve or El Chiguro who have the ability to manipulate their, their own body to transform their limbs into bladed weapons or drills or, you know, in El Chiguro's case, he can transform himself into a shield, an impenetrable shield. 
and it, it's just the list goes on and on like the the things you could do with this power. Let's go ahead and talk about some of the limitations when it comes to shape shifting. Uh, there are quite a bit. I'm only gonna name a few, but I'll leave a list of like all the known limitations I found or that were listed on sites everywhere. But that you know you can take a look at that later. So the first limitation I want to talk about is the pain involved with transformation. Now when I talk about the pain involved in shape shifting, I mean in regards to like someone who's like a werewolf or some kind of creature where they literally have to break the, break their bones and you know readjust their body and like skin ripping and stuff like that. That's what I mean when I say like the pain of shape shifting. You know, you got some characters where it doesn't you know immediately happen. I, I can't think of the guy from Alpha, really old show. You should probably check it out. It's it's, it's kind of cool. You you probably like it. If you like this channel, you probably like Alphas. But there's a character he can transform into others, but it's extremely painful and it's kind of like flexing a muscle, like holding tension on the muscle for a while. So that's a major limitation that you know you probably just turning you off immediately. Another thing we can talk about is the time limit. Most shapeshifters have a time limit on how long they can be in the transformed state. Some can be in there for like you know hours on end. Some can only be in there for a couple of minutes. Some you know as soon as they're knocked unconscious, they're, they're in a new form. It just depends. There's there's a limitation on the timing of your transformations. Another limitation that really kind of stuck out to me is limitation of forms and shapes that you can actually transform into. There are certain shapeshifters who only have humanoid, uh, they can only shapeshift into humanoid forms. And, you know, that's your werewolves or your were like creatures. You have characters who can only shapeshift into uh, certain or inorganic or organic like materials or things of that nature, like you know, your gases or you, you know, other states of matter. And you got certain you got other characters who can only shapeshift into animals, like you know, your beast boys or I can't even think of another character. I think from what's the girl from Wonder Twins? She can only shapeshift into animals. No, yeah, the girl from Wonder Twins only shapeshifts into animals. So you know you got that limitation. To me, any one of those isn't too bad. I mean, if you can transform into like a liquid, that's pretty cool. Or you can transform into like just animals. That's still not really a limitation. But they have it listed as a limitation, so I'm just gonna let it let it sit. Certain shapeshifters they can't really transform into more complex things or. Uh, distinct uh, forms of matter. So, like, say for instance, I can't trans. If I had shape shifting, I couldn't transform into like a vehicle or uh, some type of like uh, boat or anything like that. I mean, no, no complex machinery. By the way, let's just go ahead and get into like my overall scores. And I actually took notes on this. First up, I want to talk about versatility. And for me, versus this power is pretty versatile. I mean, now granted, depending on what character or what level of power you have with shape shifting. It could be like uh, pretty, pretty insane. I'm changing my hand into like I don't know uh, a drill or hammers, like Mr. Fantastic. I just feel like that'd be cool. But, but enough of that. I gave versatility for this power. I gave it eight out of ten. So there you go, eight out of ten for versatility. Creativity. Honestly, I have to go middle of the road for creativity. I don't feel that it's. I feel like you can be creative, especially with like whatever like depending on what level of control you have with this power but i don't really think it's it's you can be insanely creative it's not like something like uh like i've seen with my hero academia with some certain characters who have like very limited powers like uh like stain or i don't know that girl's name but the crazy shape-shifting girl who takes your blood like you know you got to be creative with that like i i feel like this power is kind of like one of those story breaker powers especially if you don't have a limit, like not a limit, especially if you don't have like, well, I guess, yeah, especially if you don't have a limit on how much you can change or whatever. So, honestly, I think it's more of a five for me, a five out of ten, because I don't know, I, I just can't see it being too creative, but that's just me. If you feel differently, please let me know in the comment section. Next up is destructive capacity. I changed it from cap uh, capability to capacity because I was doing a little bit of thinking and I thought to myself, like, like what 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 level of destruction destruction can you can you bring with this power and to be honest with you I actually think it's really destructive and the score I have on this card right now doesn't really reflect that I mean it kind of does but it doesn't because I wasn't thinking in terms like you impersonating other like you know important figures or you know using your appearance to persuade others or things like that getting into like sensitive areas or getting information that you shouldn't have like I didn't think in those terms I know I was all over the place but I just didn't think in those terms and that's kind of sad but honestly this this power is extremely destructive like 
could you imagine uh, impersonating or transforming or whatever into you know a world leader and making these huge decisions or being able to like study a study someone and co like understand how they, they they walk they talk do all that stuff and then transform that person and immediately like take over their lives or you know trick their friends or family or so on and so forth just doing stuff like that it would you could like destroy lives destroy you could destroy the planet honestly but it's not outwardly as destructive as you know uh, I don't know uh, matter manipulation or uh, God tier tele uh, telekinesis it's not as outwardly destructive but it's more subtle with its destructiveness so for me I know I'm beating around a bush but I, I think my score is gonna stand at 7 out of 10 for destructive capacity like I said if you feel differently please let me know next up we're gonna go with combat potential I added this because I was just thinking to myself like I like I'm a kickboxer I'm an instructor and you know I think of like how can I use this in a combat scenario or how can it benefit me in my job or you know my hobby for combat I just I, honestly I just can't see it like not benefiting you could you imagine for instance uh, if you can grow like four extra arms like or like you know you can you can extend your reach by you know I don't know another four or five inches just to extend it like that that much is insane I just think that's that'd be so incredibly valuable especially for if you if you are gonna take up like superheroing or you use it for you know basically to cheat the game like you become a UFC fighter or whatever because I mean well I mean you still need the skill but still combat potential like potential in combat for this ability is still up there for me and I just feel like I can't go any lower than a 9 out of 10 brings us to my favorite category which is daily use honestly there is no way this can get any lower than a 10 out of 10 if you're I don't care who you are everybody everybody in their life has thought about becoming someone else or you know being taller or having a more chiseled jawline or having bigger boobs or having a bigger you know you use your imagination I don't know I use it a lot so for me it gets a 10 out of 10 if you like I said if you disagree please let me know all right now let's go ahead and jump into my best and worst user who's the gold medalist and who is the bronze medalist because I don't believe that nobody's really necessarily the worst I just feel that like there's certain characters who are significantly better at this power than others everybody I've mentioned I know, like, I don't really have a, much knowledge on characters like Alex Mercer or even Eve. I have a passing knowledge of her, but, like, characters like Beast Boy. I'm sorry. I love Beast Boy, but I just feel like he's the really third tier for this power. I feel like he's not exactly the gold standard because he's so limited and because his shape-shifting isn't complete. And I mean, like, he's bright green, so, I mean, he can't really hide that. He's not really going to blend in with any other animals. I mean... If he mimicked my dog, I'd be like, oh, it's Beast Boy, obviously. Now, like, like I said, there's no worst user. I just feel like he's the bronze medalist. Now, gold, this is a bit controversial, but I feel like, well, not very controversial. I feel like if you know DC, if you know this character, I feel like you, you can kind of agree with me. That's the Martian Manhunter. Or any of the, like, basically, I feel like Martian Manhunter has, like, the greatest, his greatest superpower is his shape-shifting. Like, dude, like, he can do so much. He is displayed you know his absolute control of his entire cellular structure he has been he's been reduced to just an arm and shape shift a face in there grew it grew his entire body back he became dragons he's became you know kaiju size he's became like a small housewife he's impersonated other justice league members that includes like superman he's impersonated, impersonated like wonder woman he his ability is just insane and like I would have put Mystique up there because she's kind of got a pretty pretty nasty level of shape-shifting ability but I just feel the Martian Manhunter is better and that's all I feel like he's my gold standard like there there's nobody I've researched that can do as many crazy things or have done as many crazy things now mind you he does have kind of a leg up because he's been around for you know damn near 60 or maybe on 70 years he's been around he's been around for a while so he has more feats but come on you can't do any better than him that's Prove me wrong. With that out of the way, thank you so very much for clicking on this video. I do appreciate your time and you sticking to the very end. Please, if you wouldn't mind liking the video, subscribing. I know I'm all bouncing all over the place. I'm just excited to get back into this. Uh, yeah, thank you so much and I hope to see and hear from you soon. Peace.